Hello everyone, I'm Vidya Vijay from Cyber Optics. Today we will talk about inline measurement of particles in semi-tools and doing so how we can improve yields and tool up time. We will start with why identifying particles are important and then how it has been done traditionally. We will look at how Cyber Optics IPS inline particle sensor monitors particles 24 seven and then look into the benefits of IPS usage. We will briefly discuss wafer and reticle like particle sensors or APS product family and end with a summary. Fine less than five micrometers in diameter particles or almost everywhere in the atmosphere. But in general, they do not significantly affect standard industrial processes. The general use of HEPA filters remove almost all of the particulates that come in the makeup of air within the clean room. However, in semiconductor manufacturing, operations involve a very special environment where particles and organic vapors can be produced during certain processes and can cause serious contamination, affecting loss of yield and defects in vapor produced. Quickly identifying when and where airborne particles originate as well as the source of the contamination proves very challenging. Minimizing particles in semiconductor fab environments remain a critical success factor. Maximizing yield and tool uptime in photolithography environments require best in class practices for a contamination free process environment. Unfortunately, identifying uh, precisely when and where airborne particles originate is challenging with traditional methods. There are three widely used methods for particle detection in photolithography environment. Benchtop and handheld particle counters, monitor reticles, in-situ particle uh, scanners. All of these three traditional methods have substantial drawbacks. Benchtop counters require long hoses to reach into the tube and are often incapable of following the reticle path. Similarly, bench top and and held methods make it difficult and often impossible to reach all locations of interest. In some cases, equipment engineers must crawl through the scanner equipment in order to make accurate measurements. Monitor reticle scanning is time consuming, creating long delays while waiting for test results. Here is a flow chart of this process. Start with pre-measuring test reticle and then load the reticle into the tool. Then uh, cycle the test reticle, reticles as it would during normal operation. Take the reticles out and wait for a post-measure tool availability. When the tool is available, post-measure reticles and analyze results. If problems are found, you repeat the same process all over again. This type of surface scanning methods do not deliver results in real time, making it difficult to determine precisely when or where monitor wafers become contaminated. Photolithography tools scanned with monitor reticles and in-situ methods routinely have excessive particles. The in-situ scanner will scan monitor reticles going in clean but intermittently exit with substantial amount of particles of unknown origin. In summary, traditional methods for particle detection are not ideal for identifying the particle source, making particle contamination a constant source of frustration for scanner operations. If we can detect particles real time and do so wirelessly, we solve many concerns in the semiconductor environment. We do not have to open the tools to make such particle measurements. Once we identify the source of contamination at a particular process step, the tool uptime is increased by performing maintenance at the required area. Doing so, the first pass wafer yield and tool availability is increased. We can reduce the cost and complexity of using test wafers and reticles. Knowing the contamination and detection issues, Cyber Optics has come up with a sensor that can detect airborne particles in vacuum and gas flow lines. 
IPS is permanently mounted in the supply or exhaust line and detects particles 24 seven. It can detect particles of 0.1 micron size and higher. The 10 to the power minus six star operating range means that the IPS will operate there and not leak, but will see any particles that happen to go through its interaction region at that pressure. However, the primary use is at higher pressures where gas molecules will carry particles with them. The underlying assumption with the IPS and all our other particle sensors is that it will be placed in a part of the system where gas is flowing or where a pump is connected. In the case of IPS, the particle stream travels along the vacuum fitting from the inlet to the outlet, and the sensing detection optics are along the orthogonal axis that form the other arm of the cross fitting. When a particle passes through the area in front of the IPS sensor head, the particle scatters some of the laser light and that light is collected by a mirror lens system and sensed by a blue sensitive photodiode. The particle sensing and analysis is done on microsecond timescales, processed inside the sensor head and then transmitted via Bluetooth link to the host computer where it is displayed in real time in our cyberspectrum software. Here is an example of an IPS installation at an EUV site. IPS is usually placed in the vacuum line between the uh, high vacuum pump, usually a turbo pump, and the roughing four pump. Turbo pump and a roughing, um, uh, roughing or a four pump. In this configuration, any particles generated in the system are concentrated and conveyed into the IPS by the turbo exhaust gas ring. However, the IPS sensor head can be placed in any area of the vacuum system where particles are expected to pass. Experience has shown that IPS will typically see the majority of the particle events when the system pressure is changing or when items are moving inside the system. Since the IPS is primarily intended for use in vacuum four lines, the pressure in the IPS sensing area in the four line will be relatively low. As a result, the gas in the four line will be traveling much faster than any particles, often orders of magnitude faster than the particles. Obviously, in a high vacuum situation, the particles will not flow at all since there are very few gas particle collisions. The actual particle velocity will depend on pressure, gas flow velocity, residual gas type, particle size, and other factors. The electronic filtering in the IPS will allow very slow particles to be sensed. Here is a testimonial from one of our uh, customers where the IPS inline particle sensor was installed in a vacuum line on the exhaust side of turbo pump. The unit was continuously collecting data for over a month and within the first few days, customers saw an increase in particles, de um, particles detected by the IPS well, and was able to see a power process issue when the increase in particles occurred. Our customer quickly identified particle source, performed maintenance, and returned the tool to nominal performance, which prevented yield loss, and they saved time and money. We have seen many advantages of using the inline particle sensor to locate and troubleshoot airborne particles across photolithography environments. By recording the sense particles with time, particle generating events can be correlated with events taking place inside the tool. Cyberspectrum software displays particle events in a graph with time, but can, it can also store the data in CSV and other file formats. The IPS is normally used to troubleshoot particle problems in vacuum or gas systems. EUV customers have shown clear correlation between IPS measurements and particle adder events. We also have airborne particle sensor in the reticle format and wafer format. This, this solution uses wireless particle sensing technology packaged in an actual reticle or wafer housing for ease of use inside scanners and other tools. Our sensors can travel through scanners just like a quartz reticle to detect particle sources exactly when and where they occur. 
This versatile technology is also ideal for use in fab scanners and steppers that read barcodes and alignment in transmission. Our particle sensors contain a laser-based particle detector, which uses light scattering to detect particles in gas stream. Some partial pressure of air or inert gas carries particles to the airborne particle sensor with active airflow across the detector region. From here, the solution wirelessly communicates particle data in real time to a PC. As the sensor travels through tool automation and fab transport systems, it detects particles and then puts them into two bins, 0.14 micron and a half a micron uh, size particles. Most importantly, the system records data for analysis and permanent maintenance records are saved, ensuring appropriate follow-up. Using the APS-RQ, the reticle format, the particle sensor, and APS sensor in the wafer format is very quick and easy. Here is a simple overview of our particle sensor solution and how it drives speed and efficiency for particle qualification operations. The intake blower pulls air into the sensor and then funnel into the interaction region where the airflow intersects with the focus laser beam. When a particle passes through the area in front of the detector electronics, the particle scatters some of the laser light, and that light is collected by a mirror lens system. Sensor travels like a reticle or wafer through the entire path of the reticle or wafer and to all the process, handling, and storage locations in the tool. Particle data is transmitted via Bluetooth in real time to laptop application for display data stored in a data file. Here is a comparison of our wireless particle sensor against a monitor reticle. We already saw the process cycle for using a monitor reticle. Start with pre-measuring test reticle and then load the reticle into the tool and then cycle the test reticles as you would during normal operation. However, for APS RQ, measurement results are available right away and then take these reticles, the monitor reticles out and wait for post-measure inspection tool availability. Post-measure the reticles, analyze results with the monitor reticle. If problems are found, we repeat the same process for both monitor reticles and APSRQ. However, in terms of a, uh, monitor reticles, the type of surface scanning methods do not deliver results in real time, making it difficult to determine precisely when or where monitor wafers became contaminated. However, with APSRQ, you are able to see the particles recorded at any location of the tool or the process, uh, process and storage locations. All times listed are estimates based on past user experience and used here for example purposes only. APSRQ checks the entire reticle path inside the tool, not just the reticle surface, and is 10 times savings over typical monitor reticle methods. That concludes my presentation. However, I'd like to quickly summarize the main takeaways. We saw how traditional methods for particle detection are not ideal for identifying the particle source, making particle contamination a constant source of frustration for scanner operations. Maximizing yield and tool uptimes drives the need for best-in-class uh, practices for a contamination-free process environment. Cyber optics particle sensors can detect particle sources exactly when and where they occur. Once we identify the source of contamination at a particular process step, the tool uptime is increased by performing maintenance only at the required area. Doing so increases yield along with an increases increase in tool availability. IPS is permanently mounted in the supply or exhaust line and detects particles 24-7. APS-3, APS-R can travel through tools just like a quartz reticle or a wafer wood and to all the process handling and storage locations. Particle data is then transmitted via Bluetooth uh, in real time to a PC application for display and the data is also stored in a file. Thank you for the opportunity to present about the contamination issues and explain what we can do to help with particle detection. 
Improve your process with our best-in-class particle sensors that can detect airborne particles real-time and report the results right away wirelessly.